Today I would like to talk about one of Team Unknown's missions that took place around the release of Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2. This mission was called Operation Game Cartridge, an attempt to obtain at least 31 Genesect from the Black 2 White 2 exclusive Genesect Wi-Fi event. Because cloning is cheating, we do as we always do, and have always done since the 2008 Darkrai Toys R Us event. We receive the event Pokemon on one game, trade it to the storage game, and then delete the file on what we call the reset game. Because the rule is that event Pokemon can be received once per game file, and a single game cartridge has limitless ability to create new files, as long as you do not mind deleting the progress of the file every time you start a new one. Luckily, as this particular event was exclusive to Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2 at the time, Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2 had come out hours, if not less time before. There was no progress at all made in the game to speak of. That is why I vowed to complete Operation Game Cartridge before fully starting my adventure in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 using Pokemon Black 1 as my storage game, and White 2 as my reset game. And so our story begins. It was October 7th, 2012. Traditionally, the day a new main series Pokemon game comes out is the day many Pokemon trainers of this world go to the store of their preference and give Nintendo all of their money, either directly or indirectly, depending on if one buys a game from a secondary store like GameStop, or if they buy it from Nintendo World itself. I myself pre-ordered Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 from GameStop, and so I set sail for them all, so to speak. And so this was day one of the Genesect event and Operation Game Cartridge. I called the Genesect event Operation Game Cartridge because if one considered Genesect to be a purple Game Boy, there are several game cartridges found in the Pokemon games that Genesect is compatible with. At GameStop, there were some nice-looking guidebooks for the newly released games, and a countdown to the release of the Nintendo Wii U gaming system. At that time, there were 41 days, 14 hours, 3 minutes, and 21 seconds until its release. I took pictures of some games I had a vague interest in playing someday, including New Super Mario Bros. U, Lego City, Undercover, Nintendo Land, Assassin's Creed 3, of course, but on Xbox, Batman 2, Armored Edition, and Scribblenauts. There was also a countdown for Halo 4, which would come out 29 days, 12 hours, 1 minute, and 25 seconds from the moment I took this picture. Honestly, I'm not clear why Halo 4 was accurately coming out at midnight while the Wii U seemed to be scheduled for a 2 a.m. release. This also indicates that I was walking around the store for three minutes taking pictures. Get with the program, Zelgarath. And so, at high noon, I purchased my copies of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, and because I pre-ordered, or maybe because I got it on day one, the people at GameStop gave me a little book with information about the game and a comic made out of printed screenshots of a cinematic trailer that I had seen earlier online. It contained information about Pokedex 3D Pro and Pokemon Dream Radar, which at the time of the recording of this commentary, I have yet to complete to get the Therian forms of Thundorus, Tornadus and Landorus, but I must get them on my journey ahead in preparation for X and Y. I noticed that a new movie was coming out soon, Wreck-It Ralph, which of course is a significant movie historically, as it was amongst the first major movies released acknowledging that video games have become a mainstream form of media. It also briefly features Sonic, Dr. Robotnik, and Bowser. And so, I started with the opening of my main Generation 5 sequel game, Black 2, looked around at cool stuff, and bought a creeper mug, which luckily will not explode, unless one inserts nitroglycerin. When I returned to Team Unknown HQ, I started playing Pokemon Black 2, choosing Snivy as a starter, and I set up my fancy pants, really difficult to construct, Nintendo DS recorder 
to record a string of three videos which I later posted on Pokemon Blogger 2. In fact, here are some annotations you can click on to see what I recorded if you want to. The audio was a bit wacky, but I've since solved the problem for future recordings on Nintendo DS. At 3.25 p.m., I went to my room to start my mission, posted an obvious lie to Twitter, and played the first hour into my Black 2 and downloaded Genesect on Black 1. And I put it in my collection of Pokemon, which was suspiciously missing Meloetta and Meloetta only. I had 30 trade away Pokemon in my Black 1 file to trade away for the Genesect I would be slowly pulling out of my wireless router. I also had another 30 trade away Pokemon for Operation Fairy Fountain, the following mission involving the Meloetta event, which was sure to happen. There was one Pokemon I immediately sent over to my Black 2 file to assist Snivy or rather to take over for him as my starter Pokemon. This Pokemon I sent over was my Victini, named Liberty. This Victini was so named because it was literally caught where fiction and reality intersect. I downloaded the Liberty ticket event at home, but I then caught it in my Black One file in Liberty Garden while I was in real life on Liberty Island which is the island in New York City where the Statue of Liberty is. And it is what Liberty Garden, the island in the game, with the wharves in the exact same places, and the same ground floor door into the monument that you're not supposed to open, is based on. I even made a video of this endeavor, and for some odd reason, the video has surpassed 1 million YouTube views. Here is an annotation which you may click on to see the video I'm talking about if you want to. And so, with Black 2 ready to begin the story properly, I put it away for the remainder of Operation Game Cartridge, and at 4.46 p.m. opened my copy of White 2. I then took a picture of all the Generation 5 Pokemon games, and then one of all the DS Pokemon games, and sent this particular photo to Junishi Masuda on Twitter, as this was the popular thing to do on Twitter that day. I am going to miss the Nintendo DS Pokemon games after the introduction of 3DS Pokemon titles, like X and Y, even though what I really mean is that I miss Generation 4. Black and White were good, but I would have preferred Gray version, because without it, Generation 5 of Pokemon is the only one lacking a definitive best game of the generation, like Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, and Platinum were to their respective generations. I started White 2, downloaded Genesect, traded Genesect to Black 1, and deleted the file on White 2 in order to repeat the process. And I kept doing this until it was nighttime, when I ended up with the Genesect in my general collection of Pokemon and five Genesect in the box called Genesect. Day 2 began with waffles and some sort of liquid, which may or may not be chocolate milk. I'm looking at these old pictures and turning them into a story, and I'm not 100% certain what this liquid was, but I think it was chocolate milk. And so I finally got to playing, and this would be my first full day of Operation Game Cartridge. Playing through the first hour of White 2 over and over again, tweeting, eating ramen noodles, putting in crackers. At one point I ran into a wild Riolu, but this was none of my concern, so I ran away as I do for all wild Pokemon during these event run-throughs. Putting my DS recorder to use, tweeting again, eating cornbread, and looking at my magazine, I got an additional 9 Genesect that day, bringing my total to 15 of my 31 goal. The next day, which was day 3, I didn't start playing until later in the day. I had a drink and chicken fingers and fries, and I only started playing the game at around 5.23 p.m. I only got four Genesect, but they do add up. And so day four began, and I ate some popcorn, which ended up being a little bit burnt. On this day, I only got two Genesect, but they too add up. Day five began, and I kept playing through White 2. Sitting in a parking lot, taking pictures of the sun and whatnot, I ate pretzels and kept playing when I got home. My grand total reached 26 out of 30, while Josh and Nick who were participating in this to a certain extent, together got four extra Genesect, 
which is not really a lot for two people to obtain, but it was enough for us to reach the goal, which resulted in me being able to start playing Black 2 properly on that day. We would trade those four to the Genesect box later on. For me, the most interesting thing to see during these few days was the retweets and replies made by Junishi Masuda, the director of Pokemon since the games Ruby and Sapphire and the music director since the very first games. The interesting thing about these retweets was that it illustrated plainly how far away Pokemon trainers live from one another. They populate much of the entire world. So I began playing Pokemon Black 2, and later that month I went to GameStop again in order to obtain a weapon I pre-ordered. I purchased a part plastic, part rubber replica of Ezio Auditore's Hidden Blade, which doesn't release quite as well as it should, but is pretty good anyways for the assassination of Templar agents. So I went to Walmart to pick up some Mountain Dew, and I put the blade into my collection of video game regalia, which as of right now can be worn all at the same time. I got my second badge, found out that my astrological sign in Pokemon is Braviary, and took a picture of a goat and sent it to Junishi Masuda because I wanted him to make a goat Pokemon. Then Halloween happened and I spent most of it playing Assassin's Creed 3, which came out the previous day. And so we end this story with a picture of a seagull and a picture of all 30 Genesect together in the Genesect box. Mission completed. All we had to do was wait for the Meloetta event. And so we did. The end to be continued.